ladies and gentlemen, my talk here is just to say why we sponsor this particular conference, and it's not the first time we've been doing it for quite a number of years. Masita, as you do know, is a CETA that's responsible for manufacturing, engineering, and related services sector. It comprises of five different subsectors, namely the auto manufacturing, uh, motor components manufacturing, motor repairs, and so forth. Uh, so we call that the motor chamber. The plastics and components, um, new tires, and then naturally steel. Now, when I mean steel, I don't mean like in robbing. Steel manufacturing, steel engineering manufacturing. It totally makes up, uh, it employs over 600,000 people in, the subs, in these subsectors and comprises of 44,000 companies, the majority of them being small. Now, when I speak of the auto sector, it's seven large motor manufacturers, um, original equipment manufacturers. But when we get to the steel and engineering components, it is all, it's, it's, it's about 3,000 large companies and the rest of them are small companies, uh, uh, comprising of about 12,000. Thus, wh what does it mean for Mercita? Masita views small business development as integral to sustainable growth and economic and social development and job creation. It is part of the NSDS 3, uh, the National Skills Development Strategy 3, Goal 4.6, which states very clearly, CETAs must encourage and support cooperatives, small businesses, small enterprises, worker-initiated training, NGOs and community training initiatives. Now, if, if you ask me what a CETA has to do, and I simply say to you that a CETA is a dual imperative. The first imperative is an economic imperative, which means that we've got to grow the economy, which means that we've got to train people to ensure that South Africa takes in its, its, its place in the world and on an African continent for that matter. That's the economic imperative. So economy would lead to production, production would lead to profits. Profits automatically would lead to people's lives being improved. And that's not a political slogan. When we look at the social imperative of Masita, or CETAs per se, the social imperative is there to ensure that we do correct the ills of the past. So there's no apology that we have to train women, we have to train the youth, and we have to train black. And I repeat that, women, youth, and black. Let me give you the statistics very quickly to tell you, in terms of management of our sector, the manufacturing engineering sector, 70, sorry, 17% of managers are women across all races. If you want to break it further down, 4.8% are black. Out of that, out of that total package of 17%, translated into 100%, 4.8% are black. Then you go to ma uh, managers, only 18.5% managers are black in the entire sector. Which tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that we cannot sit with this cohort of people in the elementary class of training, of working only of producing and not having managers as black managers. So as Mercita, we started doing a few things. One of them, just very quickly, the first one is beginning to address the issue of black women. So we put out a program, first uh, a master's program for a number of women, and it's not MBAs, masters of buying anything, but a master's program of becoming managers and being employed. We can only do so much. I always say this to my board. We can only provide a training, but it's for the, for the organizations and you to begin to grow businesses, which will encourage people to, to get into training. So currently we're training 50 women at Gibbs Business School, a small drop in the ocean, apart from all our other initiatives, but this is a targeted group. Of our training programs, we ensure or we're trying to push for about 54% of women in training. I can tell you that over the years, since CETA's inception, Mercita spent over three billion rand on training of 
and I must take out this group, in total we spent 7 billion, but over 3 billion rand was spent on youth and women since our inception. In terms of Mercita's role in small business development, I want to speak here to all CETAs. We should stop thinking that the economy only grows with large businesses. Most developed economies are dependent on small businesses. If we look at the American economy, when large businesses started falling in 2008 with the crash, it was small businesses that kept that economy going. If we look at, and another point I want to make here, ladies and gentlemen, is let's stop thinking that we live in America or in Europe. We cannot emulate those models. Let's start developing a South African model, and in particular an African model. If you go into Africa, you normally see how small businesses develop along the streets and an informal economy. And we need to begin to address those things. Another thing that we need to look at, it's the forms of ownerships for small businesses. And I think we, 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 it's something you can debate on at this conference. What form of ownership? This of having an idea and having one person run with a business idea and having it failed is not good. We need to share those ideas. We need to form cooperatives. We need to form little bodies and work together as small businesses and begin to develop ourselves. Another point that we are addressing, and I think it is also something you need to address at your conference, is the green economy in small business. We take for granted that green economy only refers to large businesses, but I think there's a space for small business to, to start doing it. I must say that we encourage to support cooperatives, and I also say here, ladies and gentlemen, that gone are the days that we see cooperatives as a few black women in a village who are doing bead weaving or making mat. There is nothing wrong to get involved with the auto industry. We've seen it in Japan, where small businesses begin to uh, uh, assemble the, the mirrors or the tires to, to, to a car. And that's what the cooperatives begin to do. I always challenge the small business industry, the taxi, which is a large business industry. I cannot understand why the taxi industry cannot start their own cooperative. And that doesn't mean only the taxis. It's my example. I like giving it. It simply means that you start a cooperative that owns the petrol stations, that owns the parts suppliers, and so forth. And all taxi drivers or taxi owners own these cooperatives as small businesses, and then begin to drive. So you benefit yourself rather than taking the money out of, Saint, uh, out of Soweto into Santon. So I think it's time that we begin to address that. Uh, I'm reminded of a book that I read many years ago. Um, and it said that the issue with black businesses in particular, that we have a, a 10 rent note circulate only twice in our businesses, in our communities. In a Jewish community, and that's now without being uh, racist, in a Jewish community, the 10 rent note circulates at least seven times before it leaves. So please begin to develop your own businesses. I thank you.